Hey guys, it's Joel and welcome back to the channel and welcome to an extremely special car of which its significance cannot really be overstated. There's probably not many people out there who haven't already heard of the Jaguar E-Type and that's not really what makes it special because, well, who hasn't heard of a Ford KA? What was so special about the E-Type is that when it was released, it was the fastest production car in the world. It was released with a 3.8 litre engine producing around 265 horsepower in 1961 and it had a top speed of 150 miles per hour. Not only that, it was rumoured that Enzo Ferrari upon the launch of the E-Type claimed that this was the most beautiful car he'd ever seen ever. And that's pretty high praise for someone held in such a regard as Enzo Ferrari. And this still is one of those beautiful, most beautiful series one examples. However, this is the two plus two, meaning it featured two seats behind the driver and passenger. And at the time it actually rivaled a car which I featured on the channel fairly recently, the Alfa Romeo 1750 GTV with the four seats. And like that Alfa Romeo, this car also belongs to Rowan of RC Classic Garage. And he has a wonderful collection of cars, anywhere from this to a 2001 Ferrari 360 Spider. And he does actually do videos with these over on his YouTube channel. And I'll make sure to leave a link in the description below. I do strongly encourage you to check it out, not only because his videos are interesting, but also because he's been so decent as to let me out with the keys for this for the day. So this particular example is a 1968 fixed head coupe with the four seats, but also with the later 4.2 litre six cylinder engine. Now this produced actually the same power output as the earlier 3.8 from its six cylinders. However, this one had much more torque, 18% more to be precise. That went from 240 pounds feet to 283. And I think the difference between the two is quite noticeable. However, this still being a six cylinder block, it retains that gorgeous sound that the Jaguar E-Type was first released with. Now the E-Type is a beautiful car from all angles, but by far the best bit for me is the gargantuan bonnet up front. About 1.8 meters this thing so that actually means I could lie on it and would still have a little bit of room at the end but what I would like to do is open it up for you because it has quite an intricate way of opening up and you can see the massive behemoth engine that sits inside so let's try not to embarrass myself I think I can remember how to do this there's a couple of pull uh, toggles one on this side we go around the back and on the passenger side in the same place we have another one twist and pull that's released it and then see if i can get this bit right I'm gonna open it up like this and there should be a little catch in here hmm ow never mind okay well i have embarrassed myself i cannot uh, get this open there is a little catch in here which I'm supposed to pull but the engine bay is hotter than the sun and I can't quite seem to find it so you'll just have to imagine the inside of here but it is a gorgeous looking engine this one I think has had the cams redone on it but otherwise this car is pretty much original I want to show you the inside actually first I want to show you the boot let's see if I can open up that hatch because it's got quite a fun design and then I want to have a look at the inside because there's actually quite a lot to this despite it being a design from the very early 60s these things were clad with features and luxurious items that had never really been seen in the motor car before so it'll be worth a good look and then of course we're gonna go for a drive and I think I might see if I can get hold of a special guest today because I know he would very much like to experience the E-Type. Right, let's see if I can get this bit right. So this boot opens in such a cool way, I want to show you, and I think I can remember how to do it. If I'm right, there is a release button somewhere. Oh no, oh dear. Aha, yes. I remembered something and, oh no, oh no, not another latch. Uh-oh, oh no, I'm really embarrassing myself today. Ah, oh. Rowan, the owner of this car, if you're watching, I was listening when you showed me how to do this. I've just got a terrible memory. I'm so sorry, but at least hopefully you can find some mild amusement in me struggling to do something that must seem oh so simple. Nope, I really cannot. Ah, <laughs> I did it. And look, look at how this opens. I wonder if anyone watching knows the last time 
they designed and made a car with such a hatch closest thing I can think to it in a modern day example would be like a Land Rover Defender which opens sideways however not vertically uh, but what this does reveal as this e-type was designed to be a Grand Tourer you know the classic big bonnet big engine up front a bit of space in the back um, but you could get a fair few things in here obviously the shell of this boot lid curves over which leaves a little bit more space above but you could easily get three or four large barrel soft bags in there you could probably squeeze a couple of hand baggage suitcases in the back of course this being the 2 plus 2 you do have rear seats uh, but it's a very good amount of storage and if you look under here on this particular car which i won't do actually it's just very clean and another gorgeous and corrosion free example right so navigating my way into the e-type then under this massive massive steering wheel and uh, immediately actually you are just completely cocooned in these seats these are probably one of the most comfortable seats i've ever sat in in a car i'd happily have some of these in my house um, they are just just lovely and i have to say i drove the alfa romeo that you've probably seen on a previous video early on today before this and it's just night and day between the two i think if it was 1965 ish and i was after a four-seater sports car I would probably be swaying more towards this E-Type just for the pure luxury and comfort. And also the next thing being all of the buttons. Now, I myself am a bit of an av geek. I love my planes. I do a little bit of flying here and there. And immediately I'm just thinking of like the cockpit of a Cessna when I step in and see these dials and all of these buttons which have just got the most satisfying feel to them. Of course, we have our speedo in front of us, rev counter and a clock down below. This is the handle for the choke. Yep, that is a thing that cars used to have. And again, a bit like what you would find in an aircraft. Then we have uh, these flick switches, which are just fantastic. This one for the washers, for the windscreen. This one for the windscreen wipers with two settings, either fast or slow. And I believe, yep, these have three windscreen wipers. I don't think I've ever seen that before in a car, but there are three windscreen wipers. We have a button here that says map. Now that is just for a little light underneath here, which I suppose, if you were navigating back in the day and trying to check your directions at night time this is your interior light so you could sort of hold your map underneath here and try and get a better view there is something for airflow here to come into the cabin and a handbrake manual handbrake uh, which decided not to get out of bed today it doesn't work particularly well uh, but nothing that leaving it in gear can't fix and then we just have this almighty steering wheel uh, I don't know, I should have brought a 30 centimetre ruler with me, but I'd imagine you could get one and a half of them in this space and in this space too. It's probably a good 45 centimetre diameter on this, maybe a little bit more. It's massive and it does mean that you have to sit, you have to manspread when you're driving this car just to get your legs around the wheel. And then the pedals in front, a very tight pedal box. The pedals are probably no more than four inches apart from each other. The throttle and the brake very close as is the clutch. And this clutch has such a long travel on it, but what I've discovered is that really you only need the upper 10% of the clutch pedal to engage gears and to find the biting point. We do have a large storage area here, which you could get a lot in actually, even a large mobile phone, which I'm sure they were thinking of back in the day. And this big area here, which is not storage, but it's just a large separated area between you and the passenger. One thing I didn't know about these E-types, and I only noticed when I first stepped into it, was how large the entry sills are. It reminded me of like a modern day McLaren. Now, it gives you the impression from the outside that the car actually sits quite high, but it doesn't because you step right down into the E-Type, which does make it feel kind of special. But special is the word really. When you sit in this car, it makes you feel just that. Now, I have an inkling that things are only gonna improve once we do get behind the wheel, start this beautiful 4.2 litre engine up and go for a drive. So I'm gonna make a suggestion that we do exactly that right now. So it's a fairly straightforward start sequence on this, he says. So what we're gonna do, key in the ignition, and then we're gonna prime the fuel pump. And then what we're gonna do is make sure it's not in gear, which it was, and start a button. Haha! -ha! 4.2 liters of straight six glory fires into life. Now we've got a four speed manual box and the reverse is over to the left and back but then sort of straight ahead we have first, if I can find it, second, 
third and fourth. You're gonna be very careful with this and it takes a little bit of getting used to in these older cars. So let's try reverse anyway. Handbrake doesn't work, so we don't need to worry about that. And of course, no wing mirrors on this car, so you've really only got your eyes to see where you're going. And you are very aware as soon as you step inside here, the gargantuan nature of that bonnet in front. I mean, it is almost two meters to the end of that bonnet, which is crazy. Throttle pedal on this, very, very, very sensitive as well. Probably the most sensitive I've ever experienced. And of course, no power steering. So at these sorts of speeds, maneuvering, it is very heavy. And because the rim is so flimsy, you almost feel like you're gonna pull the wheel off when you're doing some tighter maneuvers. And away we go then. Now, as soon as you step away from maneuvering speeds, it starts to make a lot more sense. It doesn't feel as big. And it is very, very, very smooth. The suspension, the ride is soft. The gearbox is nice once you get up to speed. And from what I can feel already, let's try third gear. There's quite a lot of grunt. Woo -hoo -hoo! and a lovely soundtrack to go along with it too. The brakes on the other hand, horrendous. There's literally nothing there. I mean, there is, it's, it's fine, but you really got to keep your wits about you when it comes to stopping distances. Now, anyway, if we switch to that camera, you'll notice I'm not on my own. I'm joined by my father. And um, well, why are you here, dad? I think <laughs> oh. the reason being is I know the Jaguar E-Type is like your favourite car of all time. Oh, I mean, it's just it's just a work of art, isn't it? I mean, it's, this is definitely a bucket list moment for me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've always, since a as a child, just thought this was one of the most beautiful cars ever made, and even even better in red. I think this car in red is just draw-droppingly beautiful. The ride quality as well. I mean, it's so sophisticated, even by modern day standards, and so. Again, when this thing was launched in the very early 60s, it must have just been like something from outer space. Yeah. And of course, with this just being a four-speed car, the gears are extremely long. So you find yourself not really having to shift. I mean, third gear, you could probably stay in until the end of time. Just get around this corner here, and we'll give it a little bit of welly. Try and find second gear. There it is, on the power now. And that is just glorious, isn't it? Oh yeah. Into third gear. Yeah, I mean, that is a wonderful soundtrack. The handling is very boaty. If you try and okay. enter a corner at any sort of pace, you can feel the body roll, and you can feel the skinny tires struggling a little bit yeah. to hang on. But that's not really what this car is about. Although it's derived from the racing car of the 50s, the D-Type, this was set up much more to be a cruiser. Yeah, and so that was the key thing with this is the bored out Series 1. Yeah. It had the 4.2 instead of the 3.8. And yeah. the power didn't change. It was 265 horsepower in both. Okay. But this had an 18% increase in torque. Ah. And I think, although not driven the 3.8, you can really feel it. I mean, 1500 RPM in third gear yeah, at just 30 up. miles an hour. It's really lovely, isn't it? I mean, it's it's not slow. You know, yeah. it's, it's not the fastest thing ever. And you don't really want to barrel down a road like this in it anyway, because it doesn't stop or turn well, particularly well, but it just yeah. has got some grunt and a great soundtrack. I mean, oh, yeah. I'd never get bored of that. Well, exactly. Um, and that makes up for any loss of sort of pure straight line speed, doesn't it? Just that noise. And just the experience, you know, that you, I mean, I don't, obviously I'm not driving, but I presume it, it, it feel, it, you really feel like you're driving it. Yeah, I think, for, honestly, you feel a little bit more like you're hanging on. Okay. <laughs> but I think if we got out onto a, you know, maybe a motorway or just a wider road, I could really feel myself kicking back like this, stick it in fourth gear and just, you know, watching the world go by. Yeah, yeah. The second gear at 30 miles an hour, if we plant it. We could get all the way up to motorway speed in second if we wanted to. Yeah. Fantastic. So the interesting thing is that you can still get these cars for under 50 grand, which yeah, is a lot of money to you and yeah, me, yeah, of yeah. course, but 
I don't think you'll ever get that opportunity again. I can't really see them dropping anymore. If, I, if anything, they're just going to go up, aren't they? Because they just don't make cars like this anymore. And it's impossible to believe that this design is over 60 years old. Yeah, I know. I mean, it's actually one of the many, or one of the very few things in life that's older than you. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's very true. <laughs> it is older than me. This third gear is where it's at though, because yeah. you can just oh, oh, oh. sit in it all day long. That was awesome. What speed were you starting at there? You were saying about, you know, there's obviously a lot of things that are quicker than this now, but I think as you were saying in your review of the R8 um, previously, this is usable power you can ex use its full rev range, certainly in first and second anyway. Um, Don't get me wrong, you can definitely, even though it's not that fast, you could definitely scare yourself in this. Oh yeah, yeah. Whereas like that R8 and other things you've driven, which are, you know, superb machines, you can barely, well, you cannot actually get to the top of second gear and stay legal, can you? So. Oh, glorious. Great British engineering. Yeah. Some say this is where it peaked. Well, maybe. I'd say it peaked at Concorde. Yes. I know that's not a car, but for me, Concorde was. Engineering, yeah. Obviously a French-British collaboration, collaboration, but, yeah. you know. Oh, yes. <laughs> <He's>, yes. <laughs> yeah, steering suit. If I was around when this came out, it wouldn't have been the world's fastest car because I wouldn't have been able to find third gear. Well, that's true, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this being a car that you've eagerly anticipated maybe experiencing one day. I mean, in fairness, it's not one I particularly had massive interest in, other than through you. Has it, you know, you've not driven the car, but have you enjoyed it? Oh, without a doubt. I mean, I've had the biggest grin on my face, <laughs> you know, most of the time we've been in it, particularly when you, you know, pull it in second and third gear. It's just, it's just the whole, it's visceral, isn't it? It's yeah. The, it's a visual experience, it's the sound, obviously the acceleration. And also in cars like this, the smell. The smell, yeah. Because you can true. smell the, the fuel. Yeah, you, you know you're sitting in something mechanical with an yeah. engine. Yeah. You know, that's breathing petrol. Yeah. And that you cannot be seeing this huge bonnet in front of you. It's a the, great view, isn't and it? The, and the slats, you the know, slats. the vents. Well, then that just leaves me to say a big thanks again to Rowan of RC Classic Garage for uh, letting me experience this today and also get my dad involved because this has been a wonderful experience for both of us I think but yeah, uh, thank you. make sure to go and check out Rowan's YouTube channel I've left the description below and also if you haven't seen the video I did with Rowan's Alpha 1750 GCV I strongly encourage you to go and see that now that was a, a lot of fun but in a different way so thanks again Rowan thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next one very very soon. Thanks.